Hey neighbor, welcome back to Beyond AR TV. My name is John, and it's time for another episode of The Think Tank. This is a show where I take something that's been on my mind in the world of music, and then I turn it into a conversation about something that I want to dive a little bit deeper into. And today, that topic is rock's resurgence in the mainstream, exploding in popularity with guitar-driven stuff once again, and the one small issue that I feel could undermine the entire movement. And one of the most surprising turns that I've seen thus far in the 2020s Rock music and stuff that actually has a punctuation with the instrumentation that's a little bit more real versus programmed is starting to make a comeback and it's actually starting to have a chart presence. This is not something that I necessarily expected. I felt like trap and trap influenced music, not just in the hip hop scene, would continue to dominate for at least a little bit more, but we're starting to see that star power wane just a bit. And while I kind of soured on the whole trap influenced 808s on everything many moons ago, it's something that I guess everybody else is just starting to get fatigued on now. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, so to kind of explain what I'm going to be getting at today in this video, let's take a quick step back in time. Obviously, the dawning of rock and roll music, we're thinking the 1950s, the 1960s, it was something that was very new, but it obviously wasn't just based off of nothing. Art imitates other art, and art imitates life, and I think that everybody has their influences. Some bands, some artists, not so willing to admit that, but everybody draws from some sort of well. Even back in the early days, at the dawning of rock, when it wasn't necessarily the most popular genre, but was quickly taking over and starting to dominate, there were a lot of people that were calling a band like Led Zeppelin, or even the Beatles, ripoffs of something else. And now, I think looking back, we can see that everybody does have their own influences, but there's a difference now between having something influence you and having it entirely take over to the point where it feels like nothing more than nostalgia. Nostalgia worship is nothing new. We've been battling it for the past decade, and a lot of it is pretty cool to see. I like to hear stuff that is influenced by other decades. I don't think it's an evil thing. But there is a very fine line between just worshipping something, trying to make an exact clone, and the artists that were willing to try out something new and give it their own spin. Let me ask you this, before I just flat out say my biggest concern with the return of guitar-driven music, when was the last time period that you actually felt like music was a melting pot, at least in terms of what was popular? Was it the mid-2000s? Because that was the answer I was probably going to have to give. The mid to late 2000s, I guess. I'll be generous and give it that. I felt like that time saw everybody from My Chemical Romance to Akon to Kelly Clarkson, Green Day, 50 Cent, and so many more, so many different genres, from pop punk to R&B to traditional pop and hip-hop. There were so many different things represented. And that time period kind of passed us by, and I missed that sense of diversity in pop music. We went from that to the indie and club boom competing for airtime at the exact same time, which was kind of weird because you had Mumford & Sons up against Kesha, up against all of these bands that were kind of embarrassing themselves by taking on dubstep elements, but then we had an even more prolonged sense of just one notedness with Trap taking over everything. Now that's not to put down an entire genre or say that everything that has trap influences or maybe a rolling 808 is inherently bad because obviously not true at all. But what I am trying to say is that with so many artists trying to ride out that wave for so long and failing to launch, failing to stand out really in any unique way, I'm worried that with the return of rock and guitar-driven music, that we're just going to get a bunch of nostalgia worship for the 90s, for the 2000s scene, whether that be pop punk, a little bit of grunge, or maybe a mixture of both. I'm worried that they're going to only have that influence, have producers that maybe have knowledge of that sound, and they're not going to add anything new, and we're just going to start repeating the past for the next decade. Rock representation should be getting me very excited, obviously, and I'm not slamming everything that's been coming out. There's a lot of cool stuff. But there's also a lot of similarities between many of the popular songs that I'm hearing on the airwaves now and hits of the past. You could point out one of the biggest stars of this year, which I actually am a fan of overall. I would say that Olivia Rodrigo's Good For You is definitely something that a lot of people have compared to Misery Business by Paramore. That's one example, and it was the first actual rock song to top the Hot 100 in like 20 
20 years since Nickelback's How You Remind Me? That's a long time, and I know some people would count Gautier, somebody that I used to know, fun, we are young. I wouldn't really count those. That's more of like indie pop, indie, if you ask me on a day I'm feeling generous. But obviously, Olivia is one of the biggest things to happen in music in the 2020s, and I think that there is something to get excited about there. But my cynical side says, look at this, John. This is something that definitely feels like maybe it's in tribute to or else strongly borrowing from other things. And Olivia didn't just have that with the genre of rock. I think that she borrowed a lot from artists like Taylor Swift. And of course, you could look to something like Brutal and you could say, wow, that sounds just like this or Deja Vu sounds just like Lord. But at the heart of it all, she's not the only artist doing these things. You had Machine Gun Kelly coming back last year with Tickets to My Downfall, his first full-on rock album with Travis Barker of Blink-182 producing, co-writing, playing drums, and now everybody is cutting for that sound. Everybody has Travis Barker on. I did an entire video on this. I don't want to spend too much time there, but I do feel that it's representative of what's going on here as an entirety. Machine Gun Kelly, Olivia O'Brien, Willow Smith, Bruno Mars. These are all examples that I can think of that have had a charting presence on the United States Billboard charts in 2021 so far, and these all remind me of something else, and they don't really bring anything new to the table. Whether it's Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack sounding straight out of the 60s and the R&B rock scene, or something more modern like Olivia Rodrigo borrowing from the 2000s, it's kind of this weird amalgamation where I feel like artists aren't necessarily willing to take that risk and try something new. And I'll admit myself, I get into my comfort zone, and I think it could be easy to do as a writer and say, hey, I was really inspired by this music when I was a kid, why not go back? there. That's why I have so much respect for artists that are willing to think outside of the box and challenge my perception. Even if I'm not always willing to go find them, maybe it has to be force-fed to me by the algorithm or even my own viewers, look at a band like Black Midi, who were absolutely killing it in the rock space by bringing in so many different other elements. Give me more Dua Lipas, more Giveons, more Kenny Hooplas, because these are examples of artists that are borrowing from other things like disco and R&B and pop punk from decades before us, but they're able to incorporate their own identity. It feels kind of unique to them, at least for the most part, and they have the artistic integrity to continue pushing themselves and trying new things. Now, am I saying that all of these artists are flawless all the time and that the others that I mentioned are just dog shit? No, and I'm excited at the possibility of rock making a comeback, a resurgence, becoming popular again, because we've been waiting for this for a very long time. I know I have, but it's also some Something that I just am kind of waiting with bated breath because I feel like it could go one of two ways and if it follows the whole trap influenced route then I'm probably gonna have to tap out pretty quickly. Maybe that's just my cynicism talking so I would love to know what you think. I know I've seen a lot of examples both good and bad and obviously it's personal taste at the end of the day but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Don't forget to drop a like on this video, maybe join the conversation, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. There's a couple of recent videos floating on screen now and I'll be back soon with more on Beyond ARTV.